The Serato is so delicious. You know, you don't often see white wine blends. You see a lot of reds, but not a lot of whites. This one is beautiful with Chardonnay, Vida Blanc, Muscat. Oh, it's delicious. So today we're going to make a wonderful recipe for a brunch or a lunch. This is Kentucky Hot Browns, and I love these. They are a derby tradition. Simple to do, easy for any time of day. What I've got here are some croissants that I've split and I just buttered them very, very lightly. We're going to slice up a tomato so that we have a slice for each piece of our hot brown. And generally what you do is uh, the full croissant with one serving. So I'm gonna do four slices of tomato. Now you can do this as a sandwich. It's wonderful on French bread, which is more traditional, but I love it on a croissant for brunch. Then we're gonna use some turkey breast or chicken breast. Today I'm using chicken because I roasted chicken for another recipe, so I've got chicken. And then we've got some great sauce. So let's head over to the stove and cook up some delicious Mornay. So let's make a basic cream sauce. And to do that, I've got some butter in pan and then I'm going to add some flour. Now, anytime you do this, you wanna make sure that you cook this until the flour is really cooked through. Because if it's not, it gives you a very pasty flavor and it's just not very pleasant. So let's just stir that through. And what we're doing here is making a basic blonde roux. Now, if you want a darker sauce for something, you would let your butter and flour cook a little bit longer, and that makes a darker roux. Now, once you know that's really well cooked, you're gonna add some milk, and I have about two and a half cups of milk here. You can use a whole milk. Frankly, you could use skim or even a half and half if you wanted. Anything in between will work just fine. You want to just kind of stir that through. Let's make sure that all of that flour gets incorporated. As your sauce starts to warm, make sure that you stir it frequently so it doesn't stick to the bottom of the pan. And eventually, in only a few minutes, it will become nice and thick and very rich. As the sauce thickens, I want to add a little bit of a flavor profile here. So just a touch of freshly grated nutmeg. And then I'll add a little salt and pepper. I don't mind putting pepper in to my sauces because I have that nutmeg in there. And you can always add a, a white pepper if you have an aversion to that color, but I like it. This recipe takes me back to the days of my husband's grandmother down in Marion, Virginia, making chip beef gravy. She loved to put a lot of pepper in the pan and it was always beautiful and every time absolutely delicious. Now my sauce is starting to bubble on the side of the pan and you can see that it's really coating the whisk. Once that thickness gets to the center, it's completely done, and that only takes a matter of seconds once that bubbling starts to occur. There we go. All right, at this point, we've got a nice cream sauce, but I want to make a cheese sauce. That's called a Mornay. So I'm going to add some delicious cheese to this. This is a grated Gruyere, and just enough cheese to really make a difference in this sauce. It's gonna be delicious. I wanna go ahead and turn that heat off so the cheese doesn't burn. Now, let's get back over and assemble these delicious Kentucky Hot Browns. All right, so let's assemble these. The first thing we're gonna do is take some chicken and put on those beautifully buttered croissants. Oh, it looks so delicious. I just love this recipe and I like it for dinner, I like it for brunch, I like it for lunch, any time of day. All right, now let's just sprinkle a little salt and pepper on that chicken. Mm. And then I wanna top it with some tomato slices. So a nice 
beautiful slice for each one. There we go. Now I want to spread that with a little bit of my Mornay and then I'm going to pop it in an oven at 400 degrees for about 10 to 12 minutes, just enough to get it nice and warm and to get that Mornay bubbling on top. So this is what they look like all finished and you can see that they have kind of crisped just slightly on the top. Oh, it's just gorgeous, just gorgeous. I love this flavor. I love everything about it. Now, usually when I'm serving these, I'll serve it with a little bit of a, an arugula salad on the side, just with a vinaigrette, something super simple. And that also adds beautiful color, of course. Now, what we're gonna do here is just sprinkle a little bit of bacon and a little more of that wonderful Gruyere cheese. And bacon is nice and crisp and delicious. There we go. And then I'm gonna finish it off with a little bit of chopped fresh chive. Oh, I smell it, it smells delicious. I can't wait to get my teeth into these. And this with this Arado, oh my goodness, so perfect. You know, with the Chardonnay, it's, uh, it's rich with the Vidal Blanc and the Muscat, it just adds this depth of fruitiness. It's so perfect. And with this Arado, it's absolutely delicious. Now